So, life is a challenge. I'm sure you just saw when we came up to the stage, it was a challenge that I had to think about. Hey, how are we going to do this? So, I incorporate. For me, it's, it's pretty easy now. You know, I'm 23 years in this situation. I wasn't born like this, but this did happen along my journey. And I had to start thinking a little bit different when this happened to me. And I had to kind of put away some of my pride and say, hey, when you need help, you have to ask for help. And so that was a big challenge for me, the, the, the young kid I was. So my life has been very challenging, mostly because I didn't know any better when I was younger about the things that my parents were telling me. Say, hey, go this way, son, go this way. And I said, no, nah, I don't. <laughs> I always go the other way, right? And you bump your head enough, you bump your head enough, and you think you would learn. And then sometimes it takes us a little bit longer, or at least I know I could speak for myself, I could say it took me a little bit longer. But all of us have challenges and all of us have adversities. And the thing that I want to share with you today in this vision forum is success through adversity. Uh, most of my success has been through adversity. And probably most would say the not so nice types of adversity. This particular situation happened as a result of a gunshot wound. And that wasn't pleasant, but it was the reality, and it is the reality. And it's a story that people might want to dismiss or to hide, and I'm choosing to share. Because I didn't know no better at the time, but now that I do, in hindsight, I would have done something different. But that I didn't. It is what it is. So I say that to say, I didn't learn from the first, and I didn't learn from the second, and I didn't learn from the third. But I got sat down in this situation, and I got sat down even longer in another situation. Let me share that with you today. Oh, brother, where do I begin? I wish I had a lot more time, because this story is long. It's 41 years long, but I don't. And in the essence of time, I'm, I'm going to try to be brief and, and try to be a good steward of the time. Uh, in 2003, I crossed a situation where I broke the law and I got into a drug charge that cost me to catch a case, as they say in the streets. And uh, that case ended me up in prison for 13 years. And that was a turning point for me. I had to define myself a different type of way than I had defined myself previously. See, in the beginning, I was endowed with a whole bunch of good things. They say you learn all you need to know by the time you're five years old. But you just didn't learn how to go left at five. You know, you was probably still always going right, right, right. Then you get about 13 or 14, you think you know every damn thing, and then you start to go left, or at least I went left. And so that created a lot of challenges for me. It created a lot of situations where I would find myself in trouble in school and I would find myself hanging out with the wrong crowd and thinking I knew what was going on. And that ended up in 2003, me being in another situation that would cause me to sit somewhere and think. That prison, surprisingly, was the place where I became liberated. Because I became liberated, even though my body was physically incarcerated, I became liberated in my mind. See, when you go somewhere like prison, people try to tell you who you are. They try to define you by the stigma. They try to define you by the stereotype. And by the time I got into that situation, I had epitomized every stereotype you could think of. Call that crazy. Right, I had dropped out of school. I had a child when I was a teenager, then had another child. I had been shot in gun violence. I had caught a case. I had been to jail and I had been to jail again and now I was going away to prison, leaving my kids fatherless for a decade plus. Now, when I sat on that bunk in that prison cell, I was heartbroken. And I cried many a nights because I made a lot of mistakes along the way. And I said, how do I capitalize off of this situation so that my family doesn't lose? That when I get out of here and I go back into this world that I so miss, that they will be blessed by the things that I've accomplished. 
challenge, and that wasn't an easy feat. See, prison is like a cesspool. And one of the fondest sayings I would say is, diamonds get flushed down the toilet every once in a while. And you can always find a diamond in the rough. And another saying I was fond of saying is, you don't put an African zebra in the Bronx Zoo and it become a horse. Everybody is who they are intrinsically and inherently. So I had to go back to the five-year-old kid and I had to lose the 13-year-old idiot that I had become. And all of the foolishness that I had taken on in my life, I had to change that. And it was a choice. I had to choose to change. Because I could have sat there and watched Love and Hip Hop and Little Women of Atlanta and every other thing that they did for nonsense and wasting time that anybody and everybody else did. But I came across a quote in a book one day, and it said there's three ways to spend your time. You can sell it, go to work, get a paycheck. You can invest it, read a book about stocks, and then act on it. Or you can waste it. And I chose to invest it. Investments that weren't going to pay off right away. Investments that I couldn't measure because results take time to measure. You have to see something. You have to do something. You have to repeat that. You have to do it again. And then you have to do it again. And then when you look back and you say, wow, look at all that I did, you can measure your growth and success. And I didn't have that opportunity. And in a place where the people would tell me, man, you're the scum of the earth. You ain't nobody. I had to be, remember who I was. You know what that took? That took that crazy. That crazy kid who didn't know no better, who now knows a little bit more, was crazy enough to believe in himself that, yo, I am somebody. I am that diamond in the cesspool. And I am going to make this count for something. Because see, when you counted me out and you said, yo, you was a statistic and you're going to continue to be a statistic, what do they say? Three, one in three African-American men will be incarcerated as opposed to go to college. When I epitomize that stereotype, I wanted to break that stereotype so I earned my degree while I was in prison. I'm going to change this. This is my choice. I choose what happens to me next. You don't tell me who I'm going to become. I am who I am. I am that five-year-old little foolish kid, foolish enough to believe that I can succeed and achieve. And see, so once I got on the road, right, my father, who's an educator, who used to be an education Nazi, and when I say Nazi, I don't mean it lightly, I mean it literally. Study this, do that, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, you're going to be that. Turned me totally off, but now at 30 years old, I'm starting to turn right. At a dead end, I'm starting to turn right, and I got to creep on this right turn. Why? Because I'm at a dead end, and I'm stuck here for 13 years. But I can make this situation what I want it to be or I can let it make me. I chose to make the situation into something. So now, after you decide that you are somebody and you're crazy enough to continue to believe in yourself and you just so, so, so determined that hey, it's either going to be this or it's going to be death, you won't give up on yourself. I'm not giving up on myself. And coming home did a lot for me. Because staying through that situation and learning the things that I did learn formally and the things that I did learn so pricelessly and preciously informally through life lessons and experience, I'm able to bring home and capitalize off in my own life. Because guess what? Nobody can't beat me now. Not this wheelchair. Not this stage with these people. Nobody can not beat me now because I believe in myself. And I believe in the value of the gift that I am to others. And I believe that I have something valuable to give you. So if it ain't no more than encouraging you to take the next step and whatever it is in your life that's your prison. Because prison doesn't have to be physical. Mine's was, yours may not be. A job that's holding you back, a relationship that's no good. These are the prisons we create for ourselves every day. And no amount of anybody 
doing anything but you, choosing to change, will change that for you. So if I said one thing right now that inspired somebody, I did enough. I got paid the big paycheck, and I'm happy about that. I'm so fortunate and I appreciate so much opportunities like this because it lets me live and be the individual that I was born and created to be. I came here to serve people. I came here to serve men. And you all have given me that opportunity and for that I love you greatly. I got one more thing to say as I bring this to a close. Choice and change is yours. You just have to grab it. One last closing line and then I'm gonna let y'all go on and let the other great speakers come up to the stage because I can go on and on for like a mile a minute when I get in it like a car range. Oh, 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 I'm showing my age now, right? <laughs> People only change when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of change itself. So one more time. People only change when the pain of staying the same becomes greater than the pain of change itself. Thank you.